So what is up everyone? This is your main doctor, Dr. Jim. And today, we're going to um, react to a video, um, to a YouTube video, entitled Living with Huntington's Disease. So what are you, what are we waiting for? So come on, let's react to this video. Are you ready to come eat lunch? <laughs> you, you see him laughing because my mom, he scared my mom. <laughs> so you want to put your chair down or do you want me to do it? Okay, so when we say Huntington's disease, um, this disease causes changes in the central area of the brain which affect movement, um, mood, and thinking skills. It is a progressive brain disorder caused by defective gene which is the chromosome 4 and it is named after George Huntington who first discovered the Huntington disease in the late 1800s. A monster disease. So are you ready to go out to the kitchen and eat? It's like having Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and ALS all together because you have symptoms of all three of those diseases. One, two, three. At this point, it's considered a terminal illness because they do not have a cure for it. Eventually, your muscles give away and you can't swallow or walk or feel yourself. You get incontinent and um, stuff like that. Um, okay, so... The reason why it is called monster disease is due to its severe manifestation. Um, this chromosome 4 carries a person's entire genetic code, and this genetic codes the blueprint for, pro um, for protein called Huntington. Uh, when this Huntington is, a defective, is defective, it leads to a brain changes that causes like abnormal involuntary movements, like a severe decline in thinking and reasoning skills, irritability, depressions, and also mood changes. Um, like, you know, like the symptoms of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or also known as ALS. All of these can be seen in Huntington disease. And you know, actually that um, there is currently no cure for Huntington disease. And um, um, this Huntington disease is there's no way to slow or stop the brain changes as it causes. So, yeah. So let's continue. My dad got diagnosed when I was six. They just drugged him up because they didn't know much about the disease yet. I just know that it was it was a struggle growing up. She passed away four years ago from the same thing. He likes soups and stuff, so we do a lot of soup. My brother Mike, we noticed 20 years ago when my dad died that he was starting the symptoms. So between me and my mom for the last year, we've been taking care of him. No, go through the, to the chair. We're going to eat at the table. I have to make his meals. I have to help him get dressed. He stumbles a lot, so whenever he's up, I'm right behind him. Keep going. Okay, go ahead, sit. We've decided as a family and him that he wants to be here with me, and as long as I can physically do it, this is where he's gonna stay and take the best care I can. Um, okay, so, like, you know, a hunting in this is is an autosomal dominant which means that anyone can eventually develop the disease which means even if one parent um even if uh, like the mother or like the father has it it will manifest to all offspring it usually develop from the ages 30 and 50 but they can appear as the early as you know like two years old or as late as 80 years old do you want half of this or do you want the whole thing? No, this. Half or whole? Yeah. Half. Myself, I found out in 2006 that I had 
the gene. I mean, it changed my whole outlook on life. Like, I'm the most negative Nancy there is. I'm trying to get better about it, you know, but it's kind of hard when, especially when you're handed a paper, you know, and that, that says, you know, you have a terminal illness and you just got to ride it out and hope for the best. It is progressing, and this is right at that age 46, you know, between 40 and 50 is when your symptoms really start to rear their ugly heads. Remember, drink some of your water too, not just the pop. Mm -hmm. Like what I said earlier, the, the hunting gene gene defect involves extra repeat of one specific chemical code in one small section of, of uh, chromosome 4. Like, you know, um, the more the normal Huntington gene includes um, 17 to 20 repetitions uh, of this code among its total of more than 3,100 codes. Like, this defect can cause Huntington disease, which includes about 40, to 40 or more repeats, you know, like genetic tests. Um, for Huntington's disease measures the number of um, number of repeats um, present in an individual's Huntington protein gene. And scientists identified the defective gene that causes Huntington disease in 1993. Um, there, is, there, is no, um, there is a diagnostic test available for this and um, this test can confirm that, that, the, defect, um, that the defect gene for Huntington uh, protein is the cause of of symptoms in people with suspected Huntington's disease and can detect the defective gene in the people who don't yet have the symptoms but are at risk because you know like what I said it is an autosomal dominant and because a parent has a uh, Huntington's yeah. Whoa. You're full? I figured. It's still a work in progress with my brain you know, because I don't know if I'm getting the placebo or the drug, but I'm trying really, really hard to. Um, you know, like uh, Huntington's disease brain um, brain changes, brain changes uh, lead to alterations in mood, especially in depression, anxiety, and characteristic anger and irritability. Another common symptom is an obsessive compulsive behavior in leading to a person to repeat the same question or activity over and over again. So that, uh, so, uh, like what I said earlier, uh, it causes, it is a defect from chromosome, or chromosome 4, uh, which has the gene of Huntington's protein gene. So, uh, so let's continue. To change my outlook towards it because you know whether I'm on the drug or not at the end of it I'm gonna get the drug one two three good job fist bump fist bump me thank you look this is what I have you know I'm gonna fight it for as much as I can and you know eventually there's going to be a cure keep going keep going a little bit more if not a cure an active treatment to increase my quality of life by like 20 years because if I'm in the beginning stages of it now my quality of life with stress and stuff will go down fast and then I would be like my brother and my other sister and I don't want that on your side are you comfortable yeah okay Actually, there is currently no cure for Huntington disease and no way, you know, to slow or to stop the brain changes it causes. Yet, there are treatments um, focused on managing the symptoms. Um, other Huntington symptoms such as anxiety, um, depression, and insomnia also should be treated according to uh, generally accepted guidelines, you know. And expert uh, experts encourage people with Huntington's to keep all their medical appointments and not to get discouraged if it takes their healthcare team some time to find the best drugs and you know and the most effective doses. And that is for our episode for today. So again, my name is Jimboy Madera, your medical technology for today. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell. See you next episode. Bye bye.